I live in a country where the M4 is the norm, the standard of airsoft, a place where if you don't have an M4, then you're the weirdo, like not having mods in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. I honestly can't remember the last time I saw something completely crazy on the field, something that was put together in a garage over the course of a couple weeks, or a real piece of work like this amazing looking custom SKS that I'll go over in another countdown one day. The gameplay in the background is from Desert Fox Defense Operation 878 by the way. I got the chance to film some gameplay and just enjoy an awesome event in Texas and I enjoyed every bit of it. I'd really recommend that you try out a Desert Fox event with the Blue Fox Tracker if you hear that one is coming to a field near you. I'll definitely be sure to add links in the description for their website and Facebook. But you're here for some of the most crazy airsoft builds, so how about we just kick things off? You got Shovel? You got Beautiful AK-47? Well, just slap them together and bang, Shovel 47. Brilliant. Peppy from Sweden made this out of an old SEMA, and hearing that this is from a Swedish builder doesn't even surprise me. So many awesome builders have been coming out of Sweden, I've noticed. Thinking about it, this would be a nice and cheap build for some of you guys with shallow pockets. Got $130? Then just build a Shovel 47, then bury it to get some of that good old rust growing on it. It's just immersion, right? In the end, this was built for a Swedish LARP event called Bloodsband Reloaded, and thanks to the game Rust, that gave Peppy the idea of using his yard tools with Airsoft. I mean, why not? It beats a lot of the other stuff that I see all over the place, and you're bound to get some looks with something like this. So Peppy has something different for a different type of event to go along with a playstyle that I could see myself jumping into one day. People should be looking at this kind of work to see how to really have fun with Airsoft. So this may be cheating, treat it as you will, but how about a crossbow sniper rifle? You're seeing that, right? This was a Tokumari VSR-10 that was stock once upon a time, but now it's a straight pull short barreled hybrid that could in retrospect hit 800 feet per second if you were to tighten the bow and have a full sized barrel. Jeff Repairsoft of Belgium said it's the only one of its kind in the world and that this thing could reach 270 feet with good ammunition. I've seen someone already use a crossbow converted into a BB thrower, but this is stuck somewhere in the middle. Gotta give it to Jeff though, adding a bit more challenge to playing airsoft is pretty honorable, and having the ability to change your velocity on a spring powered bolt action rifle is really stand out. Just like this freaking awesome APS Cam 870 shotgun fitted to a bullpup unlimited stock kit but then again, Ross Radford of the Explosive Enterprises Airsoft team is a legend in its own right. Need I have to show this mech suit he turned in for the unique loadout show again? Eh, whatever, we'll check out an air build by Ross Radford anyway, before we move on to the next section. It just wouldn't be a crazy build countdown without his flamethrower. This is not basic or a common sight. You can even argue that this isn't an airsoft gun at all. There's a photo album on the Explosive Enterprises page that shows how this was built, but it's pretty much off-the-shelf plumbing hardware except for some 3D printed parts here and there. Making this a relatively simple build to put together if you have some knowledge, $75 in your wallet, and 6 hours to pass. This will make any confident HPA user going for ROF or DSG wizard respect you as you pour out BBs at 100 or 140 rounds per second at 150 to 450 feet per second depending on pressure output. Yeah, if dialed up to the max, this would be an absolute terror that would probably get banned all over the place. Forget about 40 mic shells. Ross puts those to shame with this crafty mine and less than $100, but at least he plays with this flamethrower kit respectfully, at only 120 rounds a second with a velocity of 225 feet per second. I say only, as if 120 rounds being shot at you is nothing. Could be a lot worse though. Ross deserves some recognition for this whole kit too. Love the shells across the chest and the oddly apparent Ghostbusters feel. This could be in a top spot of a future show for sure, because the Explosives Enterprises team is a group to look up to for some of the most unique kits in the world. I have two more builds to show off. You've seen how garden equipment should be used. I've shown you how to spice up the game of Airsoft either at 120 rounds a second or with the precise accuracy of a hybrid VSR-10 with a crossbow built into it or even with a bullpup shotgun that looks like it was ripped from the future. And now I'm going to show you how to properly mod an M4. This is also how to properly own a Crytac. This is Joshua's Call of Duty Zombies inspired 
Ray Gun Mark II. Joshua said when he saw a 3D printed model of the Ray Gun on Etsden 3D, he just had to make this one on screen a part of reality. His first step was to research what gun could possibly fit inside if he hollowed out the 3D model, and of course he picked the Crytek PDW Mark II for the barrel length and for its internal reliability. Joshua also decided to experiment with the X-Cortec XT301 compact tracer, and after a few weeks, the model was printed and sent overseas to his doorstep in securely packaged, easy to assemble pieces. The ray gun was obviously not intended to house an airsoft gun inside of it, so Joshua had to get to work with the Dremel. After all the pieces were cut and checked for fitment, the painting was next. Spray paint and acrylic paint was carefully applied. The green paint is actually fluorescent, so it kind of glows under UV lights, which is super cool. After Bondo, superglue, duct tape, and Velcro, it was finally done. Originally, it was going to have LED lights, and the whole thing was going to be held by magnets, but he ran into some internal spacing issues and the lack of electronic wiring knowledge. So for now, it's being held by Velcro, but what can you do? Every man needs to know his limits, a wise man once said. Although, because of this, Joshua can easily service the gun after each game. It also allows him to adjust the hop-up and change the battery whenever he wants. Overall, most of this gun is solid and secure. One rear bracket broke off at the end of the last game he played, but a replacement is currently in the works to get that fixed. Now, only if you can get this thing to fire in three round bursts, then you'd be perfect. This build did take a respectful 80 hours and $650 in spending cash to make though. This was built for the love of the old school Call of Duties like Black Ops 1 and World at War. A model to play with and display like a true trophy. This was the greatest challenge for Joshua to put together. It's not perfect, but it's still one of the greatest builds I've ever seen in my personal opinion, right next to Mark Cherry's Halo Spartan Laser from the first part of the 20 loadouts show. I love those old memories from when Call of Duty was the gold standard, when I could just grab the Galil and Wonder Waffle out of the mystery box on Duris and just wreck house all the way to round 49 and above. Man, after this show, I've got to really throw in Black Ops 1. I'm so hyped to play now. The glowing BBs are the cherry on top, solidifying the fact that this is a laser gun. The fun factor with this gun is through the roof, Joshua said, and I would assume that's true for when he's on and off the field. And yes, it looks amazing right next to your ceramic monkey bomb that you made back in high school. This is a truly legendary build that some of you Crytac owners can't top with your basic Crytac. <laughs> I just love this show. Who else gets to share stuff like this or like this? I saw a lot of you guys wanting to see some LMG builds next. Well, how do you feel about this devilish classic army chainsaw M249 from Denmark thanks to an old school returning submitter named Clement? Hey Airsoft Al, I know you're watching this. I bet you're going crazy watching this countdown because some of these builds are just too much to take in all at once. Starting off here, I need to state that this build isn't even done yet, despite how it looks. No, there's even more testosterone that needs to go into this monster. Clement still plans on making this a more juggernaut optimal weapon by putting an HPA engine in it and making an ammo backpack feeding both BBs and air to the weapon. Might as well just add on some truck nuts under the barrel while you're at it, but that's just me talking. On the inside, this beast is completely decked out, starting with the Sistema Magnum motor, core 18-1 gear set, garter 130 spring, Airsoft Pro Hop-Up Chamber G&G Green Hop-Up Rubber, Mad Bull Python 455mm 6.03 inner barrel, an SHS piston with two metal teeth, an Airsoft Pro nozzle, an SHS CNC piston head, and an SHS CNC cylinder head. Then came the outside overhaul that consists of an ANK M249 nutsack mag, the Muggin Fire Chainsaw Grip, three SCAR CASV rails, a SEMA Swordfish front muzzle brake, a Chinese M249 lower rail handguard, Airsoft Pro Dummy 556 rounds, and the Classic Army M203 long grenade launcher. A lot of these parts came cheap though, thanks to secondhand deals and spare parts, but still, $1,039 ain't cheap to most people unless you eat and bathe in Gucci bags and HPA M4s. This was built because Clement knew he'd probably never own a minigun, so why not build something just as terrifying? This is a true head turner. It's the 1000 horsepower Supra that showed up to a car meet filled with Civics and Mazda speeds. This isn't practical though, not at all. Downright stupid in a lot of occasions on the field, but when you just bust this out of the bag and hop into the field laying down supportive fire, then you're the kingpin. Not once has Clement gotten a kill with this behemoth, but he still swims in physical gallons of fun that manifests when playing with this chainsaw build. 
And just to think that this all began because he saw a couple guys on Facebook putting SCAR handguards on their M249s. I should have done this show so long ago, just showing off some of the craziest builds I've ever seen from all around the world. This was just a taste of it, and I have so much more to check out and to show off, so go ahead and subscribe now if you haven't already for even more stuff like this. I'll be hitting 150,000 subscribers soon, and I could really use your help to get there. I'll even do another crazy airsoft build show when we break that milestone with a couple gift card giveaways just spread out to celebrate. I have to thank everyone who submitted for the show on the US Airsoft Facebook and on the Airsoft Heretics group on Facebook for hosting the most popular poll that most of these builds were submitted to. Also big shouts to everyone who spanked that like button in the last countdown as we broke 800 likes in a day and I thought that was pretty awesome so I really mean it when I say thank you. You guys are really helping me out with all the support. I have a lot more to work on so I can have more content your way, so I guess that's it for me this time. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time.